on, everybody? Welcome to the Geeking Squad podcast here on the Geeking Poet podcast channel. I'm sounding, oh. I'm sounding very uh, like Sunday, Sunday, Sunday today, aren't I? <laughs> I'm one of your hosts, Larry Roberts. Over here to my uh, to my right, you can't see her, but she's getting ready to cha cha cha. We've got none other than Megan Gis. And uh, yeah, it's good to be back with episode six of the all new, all shiny, all <laughs> fabulous Geeking Squad podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's been fun. We started doing this uh, Geeking Squad thing again what, back in uh, early August, was it? Yeah, it'd be like 12 weeks ago now, right? If we do it every two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Ish. Wow. 10, 12 weeks. It's going yeah. by quick. It is. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, on this show we talk about uh, just geeky pop culture stuff. It's not about any one particular topic. It's about all the things that have been discussed and shared in the Geeking Squad group on Facebook, which is free and open for everybody to join as long as you're not a dill weed. No, we don't talk politics. We don't talk religion. Yes, no religion, no politics, none of that funny business. We just like to talk about, you know, all the geeky, lighthearted stuff. And then we do get into some real world stuff that... Theories and conspiracies that that we're open for that. Yeah, as long as it's like about aliens or you know whales or something. I don't know <laughs> pyramids. I don't know <laughs> just go. something along those lines. But uh, yeah, before we get into it, Meg, how are you doing? I'm doing fabulous. How are you? I'm doing okay. I, just, I imagine you're not appreciating this uh, temperature drop we've nope, got here. Nope, not enjoying this at all. No, yeah, Meg is not a fan of the cold. Mm-mm. It drops below 80 and she is unhappy. I'm freezing. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> uh, I'm hanging in there, you know, just rolling, just rolling with it as best as I can. That's all you got to do. Exactly. But all right. Yeah. Let's not, let's not even, uh, let's not beat around the bush as they say. Let's get into the first segment. Later when we get into our squad talk segment, I've got a little surprise kind of thing I want to, I want to spring on you. Oh no. <laughs> I'm scared. Yeah, you should be. You <laughs> should be. But uh, before we get into that, we have a segment that we really enjoy because it's kind of our catch-all segment of all the latest and greatest uh, pop culture news going on. And it is in a whole little bit that we like to call... What's shaking, Bacon? <laughs> It will never get old. Yeah. She never gets tired of hearing that intro. So, yes, this segment is called What's Shaken Bacon? And it's just about what's shaken out there with comics and toys and music and TV and movies and books and all that, all the different kinds of stuff that we love. But unfortunately, we have to start off as we always do with... It never fails. I know. Well, unfortunately, people do pass away and it's really sad and we do not want to leave it uh, unsaid. You know, we want to give them some attention and put a spotlight on them because they deserve it. In this case, just a couple of days ago, we had the passing of legendary NFL star, actor, author, and commentator, none other than Dick Butkus. Wow, that was that's a hard hitter here, yeah. in, here in Chicagoland. That, that's, that's a tough one. Yes, Dick Butkus was born in Chicago, and then he rose to prominence as the linebacker for the Chicago Bears from 1965 to 1973. And you know how many other teams he played for? How many? None. He was really? only he was a Chicago a bear. bear. Yep. He is the most Chicago bear <laughs> of all <laughs> Chicago time. bears. I, I'd say only, uh, if you, I don't know if you'd say he was secondary to, but he's, he's right up there along with Walter Payton. Mm. Those two guys yeah. are the guys. And then, together. yeah. And then I guess if you could say there was the Trinity, the third would probably be Brian Urlacher, you know? Mm. Each different different generations, uh-huh. you know, which is pretty cool. But being from Chicago, being a Chicago Bears fan, I am a huge, huge football fan. And growing up in a family that loved football, I mean, I knew all about Dick Butkus. He was, he's a legend, man. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows Butkus. And Butkus also was an actor. He was in all sorts of like movies and stuff like that. He even, his one of his first acting, is probably his first acting role was portraying himself in the movie Brian's Song, which is a great movie if you've never seen it. I've not. Oh, it's a it's a it's a tearjerker movie. Oh. It's a it's a real good movie, but we're very sorry to see that Dick Buckkiss has passed. He passed in his sleep at the age of 80. Anyway, Dick Buckkiss, we salute you. You are one of the greats and you always will be. That is 
going to be short and sweet uh, getting into that kind of stuff. Um, let's talk about some things we're excited about. Meg, are you excited about anything? I am super, super excited. There is a glow-in-the-dark vinyl on pre-order right now Yeah, in my inbox. Okay. And it is Beetlejuice's soundtrack. Oh, nice. So you're talking vinyl records Vinyl then. records, yes. So it's you can pre-order it right now at interscope.com, and it ships October 9th, so just in a few days, really. Yeah, a few days from when we're recording We're recording, this. Yeah, yeah, by, by the time the, it comes out. Yeah, exactly. Be here. People probably will already be able to get it by the time they hear this. Yeah, yeah. So it's celebrating the 35th anniversary of Beetlejuice. Wow, 35. 35. Sheesh, that'll make you feel old. It does. And how much does it cost? $30. That's not bad. That's actually really good, and it's a double vinyl? Uh-huh. Oh man, yeah, that's that's actually really good for a two record set and colored vinyl and all that stuff. Yeah, that's cool. Does so, I guess I shouldn't even ask this, but it obviously has this. It has the Harry Belafonte song. It on does. It, right? it sure does. Okay, so it so it's got. Does it got both of them? Does it got Deo and Jump in the Line? It it does. Jump in the line, Jump. rock your body on time. Yeah. If I'm gonna sit here and shake and dance yep. with the football players. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So you're getting that. I, I am it. so getting that. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Because for those at home, if you don't know, we're both vinyl collectors. So even though we have different tastes, a little bit different tastes, some things we like the yeah, same. Sometimes the same. But, sometimes not. But we have some different tastes in what we collect and everything. So you keep talking. I'm gonna go over here and order this. <laughs> Okay, well, while she's ordering that, we're going to talk about another announcement that's coming up the day after the Beetlejuice record comes out. On October 10th, they are finally, at long last, releasing to streaming ABC's Moonlighting series. Now, this was a show that came out, I'm sure some of you will remember this. This was a show that came out back in 1985. It lasted four years from 85 to 89, and it starred Sybil Shepard. Mm -hmm. And it's the show that basically rose to prominence, none other than Mr. Bruce Willis. Yes. He was so good on this show. <laughs> did you why ever, he skyrocketed. Did you ever watch I, this show? I, I did. Okay. Um, I don't remember watching a lot of it because it's probably too old for me at the time. Yes, definitely. Yeah, if you were watching it back when it was first on, yeah. you, you were in single digits. You yeah, know? yeah, exactly. And I didn't quite understand what was happening. Gotcha. But I am very excited. I don't have Hulu. <laughs> yeah. I really need to well, get Hulu you can back. Borrow mine. Yeah. But because um, <laughs> there's another one show I want to be watching. Okay. Um, on there, I was like, oh, I need Hulu. <laughs> so, but I need it for this because I would definitely like to binge watch this. Bruce Willis. Most of us know Bruce Willis. I mean, we know he has a sense of humor, but we know him more as kind of like the 90s and on Bruce Willis, the uh, action star kind of guy. Right. He was not that in this. No. He was hilarious. Like, I, I can't even tell you how incredibly funny he was in this. He wasn't like the Die Hard and On Bruce Willis. Die Hard and On kind of established a different sort of Bruce Willis for us. This was an earlier, like, more uh, snarky and funny and witty kind of Bruce Willis. So funny. This came out when I was in eighth grade, and my uh, one of my close friends, Lisa, and I used to walk home from school every day, and we would every week when this would come on Tuesday nights and every week on Wednesday, like we would We'd talk look, about it. Yeah. We would look <laughs> forward to walking to and from school together so we could talk about the night before his episode. And there was so many, we had so many like inside jokes and everything. I have fond memories of the show. I used to watch this with my parents cause they loved the show and it was really good. And there was a lot of things they did on this show that was actually like pretty groundbreaking. Mm. They did one that was like kind of like one episode that was sort of like a musical, which we were just talking about not long ago, like some of these shows are trying to do that lately, like mm -hmm. Star Trek and things yeah. like that, to varying degrees of success or not. This one, it was really good, like mm. the way they did it. Yeah. So it was called Moon. I thought they lived together. No. See, no. I was way too young to understand what was happening. They're moonlighting because they're detectives. Yes. I get it. Yes. And the whole thing was, and of course, as typical, there was this tension between them, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, there was always that, are they going to get together? Right. Are they not going to get together? That, that like, lasted throughout the whole series, pretty much. And there was, like, close calls and different things that went on. It, that was such a popular trope in the 80s because mm -hmm. that was, like, you it had- It still is. 
Yeah, it still is, but especially back then, it was like every show, you had to have your Sam and Diane, you know, from mm-hmm. Cheers and, and all that. There was always that kind of dynamic going on. Mm. But it was funny. It's a great show for anybody that's ever been like like yourself that's been like, oh, you know, I, I've always wanted to check that out or I've heard a lot about it. Honestly, give it a chance. I think it's really good. I have not watched it in years. So I cannot attest to whether it's going to hold up as well now, 30 some odd years later, but I'm willing to find out. Yeah, we're going to find out. Exactly. So anyway, yeah, so that's exciting. That's going to be streaming starting October 10th on Hulu. Uh, What do we got next? Oh, you know, there's another thing. Speaking, I was just talking about shows that have been on for 30 some odd years. Yeah, we had a 36th anniversary of Star Trek, the next fucking generation. I was just going to say, do we know anybody that knows that likes that show? Um, me. I love that show. <laughs> That's my favorite. That is your favorite. Yeah. yeah. So September 28th, 1987. Wow. I was born and presented to us. Yeah. You were seven years old. Yep. I was perfect. Perfect age. Yeah. I watched this every night. Wow. Me and my dad and my brother huddled in front of the TV. And enjoyed some Star Trek. Yeah, this was kind of like the start of Megan's geekdom, you know? This kind of really was the thing that got you more into geeky stuff. Because all the other stuff kind of came later, you know, your Beetlejuice yes. and your Labyrinth and your all those things. Those kind of came after that. So this was really like the nucleus of <laughs> Nebulous. It started it all. Yeah, this was the nucleus of everything for you with this. Yeah, because it's the first show I ever, like, got to know the characters real names and I followed it like an ongoing I followed series. It. Yeah. Yeah. I, the TV guys. I was so excited every time I had them in it and I yeah. cut out all the articles. I mean, I was full on a Trekkie. Right. So, yep. This is my, my jam right here and I'm very excited. You still watch it all the I time. I still watch it all the yeah, time. Yes, I, I do. I'll come over and she's got the TV on and it's on that it's on that channel that's just playing nonstop next gen episodes. Uh-huh. Yes, next gen DuckTales <laughs> pa- or what is it? Chippendale. Chippendale Rescue Rangers or Price is Right. <laughs> you pretty, are definitely stuck. Much. She's I'm just kind of stuck in nineteen eighty seven. Yep. Uh, and I'm not mad at it. <laughs> It's why we do this show. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's what this is all about. Wow. Okay. So that's cool. 36th anniversary. Wow, all right. That makes me feel old. Yeah. That, that certainly makes me feel old. Well, moving on from that, uh, another thing, we're not talking about Star Trek, but now in the world of Star Wars, because you know, I always got to get some Star Wars talk in there. <laughs> always. One of the things that just came up recently on the back of the recent episodes in season one of Ahsoka on Disney Plus, they had Hayden Christensen back as Anakin Skywalker, and it was great. Everybody was really excited. I was really excited about it because it was it was cool to see him. It tied up a lot of loose ends, and it kind of helped to redeem the character and his portrayal of the character because I think he was kind of done dirty by George Lucas and the writers and the editors mm-hmm. in the tr- in the prequel trilogy and stuff. You know, I mean, I know I was like, oh, they made Anakin so whiny and yes. such a brat Ugh. and everything. And they had already kind of remedied that with the Clone Wars animated series. But yeah, he was great in that. Yeah, but that wasn't that was Anakin that really wasn't Hayden Christensen and that wasn't you know what I mean? It wasn't like it and it wasn't well known enough to the general Star yeah, Wars. Too many people wrote it off. Right, exactly. A lot of people wrote it off because they were like, oh it's animated. It doesn't count. Well it very much counts. Do and now. Yeah. And the way that they've tied it all together with series like Ahsoka has made it completely relevant and it's awesome to see Hayden getting his just rewards with this the other cool thing about that episode was we got to see for the first time a live action version of the Clone Wars version of young Ahsoka Tano when she was his Padawan Mm -hmm. and that was portrayed by the young actress Ariana Greenblatt well there's been some talk because it went It looked so good. It went over so well with fandom. There's been some talk that 
Hayden and Ariana talked amongst themselves. Now they said there's no plans. <laughs> this isn't actually happening anytime soon. But they talked amongst themselves about the idea of, hey, you know, if we got asked to do this again and do more live action Clone Wars, Ahsoka and Anakin stuff, would we be game? And they both were like, yeah, yeah, we'd be game for that. Mm hmm. And I'm really excited about that. Like, Are you? I, oh, yeah, I think that could be cool. But depending on how they do it, because to be fair, like our friend Alex, Alexander right. brought up, he said, you know, the only problem I have with that is I don't want them to try to erase what they did with the Clone Wars and the cartoon, you know, because go, oh, well, you never mind the cartoon. Just the only thing that's important is the live action version of it. And I understand his point about that. I get why he feels that way. And I can see that being an issue. But I think it would depend on how they go about stuff. At the very least, if they do another season of Ahsoka, which I really hope they I do. I do. I really hope they do. Yeah, they, they need to. But if they do another season of Ahsoka, I would love to see more of that. If it's just flashbacks, right. not necessarily redoing anything that was already done. Like I'd want it to be something new, something we haven't already seen, even if it's from back then. I wouldn't want them to recreate stories they already told just with these live actors. Right, just like they did. Right, yeah. It's like it's at events we know of, but we didn't see these things happening. Not they exactly. They didn't actually happen. Right, not exactly like so. that. Exactly. So if they did more of that kind of stuff, man, I'd be all for it. I, I hope they do do something like that. So, I do too. Yeah. So we'll see. I again this was this was just something the actors themselves brought up. This wasn't brought up by uh Disney or uh Filoni or anybody in charge of that kind of stuff. So we'll see. But anyway, if depending on how they do it, I'd be all for it. Anyway, speaking of Disney, um I heard you talking about some kind of cool little thing going on with Disney because I know it is their hundredth anniversary. Yes. And they've got some new things that are being announced. Yeah, so it sounds like they're going to do a short film. Okay. And it's going to be like this major crossover. It's called Once Upon a Studio. And it's basically going to have all these characters from all their different movies come in to one short film and interact together. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that'd be kind of interesting to see so you're how talk they do that. You're talking like... All through, all, so going all the way back to like you know, like Snow White and stuff like that, right. all the way to Moana, Moana, and, and, yeah, and and Frozen and all those kind of things. Right, that's interesting. I'm trying to picture how they would mix right? that. How up. are they going to do that? Because they're so different. Is is it going to be like um, the Chip and Dale movie where it's you know they know they're in movies, right? That are like on a set somewhere. I I don't know how they're going to do this. Yeah, interesting. So when does this come out? Um, I believe it comes out October 15th. Oh, okay. So that's coming up real yep, soon. Real soon, too. Well, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, I'll definitely check that out. Yeah. That sounds fun. Right? I thought it'd be interesting to see all them together and great way to celebrate the 100th anniversary. Yeah, you know, I kind of was expecting Disney to do more for their 100th anniversary. I thought it was going to be a really, really big, a big deal. deal. And they've just been kind of low-key-ish about it. At least for Disney, they've been low-key. I guess maybe we have to be in the parks to see that really in action. Maybe. maybe. Yeah, maybe they're not doing more on TV Disney and Plus. online and stuff, but maybe at the parks there's more. It could be. Yeah, because I was thinking, as you were saying that, it'd be cool if they did, like, they used to, and, like, Disney Presents, and it was Walt Disney giving you this introduction to this movie, like, every Friday night. Yeah. Like, yeah, but, we'll bring back the wonderful world of Disney. Yeah, exactly. But I guess they have a whole Disney channel. Right, I suppose. So I guess they, I, they don't need to do it. You know, here's the thing, though. I will, I'll try not to go off too long about this, but I just <laughs> want to say something. I know they have the Disney channel. I know there's a lot of people that'll sit there and say it's redundant. You know, we don't need to do that. I I. Just like they say about like Saturday morning cartoons. Well, why do we need Saturday morning cartoons? We don't need that because kids can just watch whatever. Watch whatever, whenever. Yeah, 24 7, you know, blah, blah, blah. I still think that there's something to be said for 
doing some special event like that. People used to look forward to things coming on Sunday night. Mm-hmm, absolutely. On it the was wonderful a big deal. world of Disney. Well, and I get people are going to say, well, it was a big deal because we didn't have streaming and all that stuff. But I think even with streaming, I think just doing a highlighted thing like that still would do well. I think it would prey upon people's nostalgia for one thing. And I think, you know what I mean? Like, I think that would be big. And I think just having a designated time and event, and especially if they did it right. Right. Just like Ahsoka right. and Loki. Now we know it comes out Tuesday, eight o'clock. Right. Yeah. So why they can't, they do like a TGIF and stream it. I was like, okay, you're going to get a new episode of this, 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 and this show back to back. I think they should consider it. I think I would be excited about that. Yeah. And and just like the wonderful world of Disney and all that. So I found what it's going to be about. Okay. The studio employees leave for work at the end of the day. Okay. And Mickey and Minnie Mouse spring free from their pictures on the wall. And they plan to gather all the characters from around the studio into a group photo. The short features over 500 Disney animation characters from all all of the studio's feature films and shorts. That's a lot. And they've got like the whole cast. So it's got, you know, Anna and Ariel and Moana and Goofy and Olaf and Scar and Mickey Mouse and Timon and Elsa and Belle and Minnie. And wow, man. It just keeps going. And going. And, oh, God. And Alan, got your Mad Hatter. Yeah, it's got the Mad Hatter. Oh, boy. My Mad Hatter. Peter Pan, Jiminy Cricket, Winnie the Pooh, <laughs> the Genie, Robin Williams. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, oh, we're wow. going to be and crying. Yeah, because they're going to use archival recordings of Sterling Holloway as Winnie the Pooh, Robin Williams as the Genie. That's super cool. Yes. I am very looking forward to this. Man, that's crazy. And then if they need, if they do need somebody to do the Mad Hatter, they could call me. They could call you. Because I can do all the voices from Alice in Wonderland pretty much, you know. Give me the jam. <laughs> Jam, bring the jam. Okay, get the jam. Mustard, mustard. Oh, mu- mustard? No, let's not be silly. <laughs> Lemon, that's different. We need that. But <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd be happy. Man, I, sh- I, you know, as I'm older now, when I was younger, I always wanted to be, my thing was I wanted to be a rock star and I wanted to play music and I wanted to do all that. And as I'm older now, I'm like, man, I really wish I would have like gone into something more like that. Like doing voice acting, voice acting or like puppeteering, you know, I mean, we can totally see me working on the children's television workshop with Sesame Street. Um, I mean, come on. I mean, you could do the puppeteering, but I don't know if you'd have the right material. Oh, well, I would have to. You'd have to clean it up a lot. I would have to tone it down. <laughs> Curb it down yeah. just a bit. Yeah. I couldn't do like what me and my buddy Nick do when no. we get our hands on puppets and the, the shit we come up with and stuff. Yeah. Because like we like we made a King Diamond puppet one time and we've got that and this nun puppet and, and nothing good nothing comes good of it. Comes no, of it. no, I wouldn't be doing that. But in any case, yeah, I'm excited about this. That That'll be really cool to see that show. So. Uh, would you say October 15th? October 15th. All right, I'm there. All right, moving on to something that, uh, you know, this is something that's not necessarily going to appeal to everybody, but if you're from the Chicagoland area or the Midwest or you've traveled through here and this is something you've gone to or maybe always wanted to, you might be interested to hear about this. So there is a place that is located atop the John Hancock building, which was one of the tallest buildings in the world. It's not the tallest. It's not even close anymore, but it's one of the biggest ones. It's located on the Miracle Mile over there by Lakeshore Drive in Chicago. And they have a lounge and restaurant that's very, very well known. It's it's world renowned, you know, mm-hmm. called the Signature Lounge. It's been there for decades now. And just recently and rather abruptly, yeah. they Good announced morning. they were closing it and they just closed. They put up like a typed letter on the door and they're like, sorry, we're gone. That's how they told the employees and everything. I know, I know. Like, and that's, that's not cool. that is not cool. Not at all. I mean, they said they were going to take care of them and all that. But apparently that's not really enough or yeah. happening maybe because they're getting sued now for it. Oof. Because all, all those employees were union. Yeah. And they're supposed to have, what, a month notice? Yeah, that's, that's usual. And they That's usually it. how they do it. But yeah, the restaurant... And the lounge were located on the 95th and the 96th floors of the building, uh, respectively there. 
And they they closed them down permanently as of September 28th. They said that uh, it's with heavy heart that they announced the permanent closing of the beloved signature room at 95th. And uh, it, they s- explained that like a lot of businesses that are that's happening because of COVID mm-hmm. and ongoing financial hardships. And, you know, the Miracle Mile has been doing tough. It's beautiful it's bad, down there. Yeah. It's so it's such a shame because it used to really be something, you know. Yeah. I hope it eventually bounces back. <sighs> it could. It yeah, could. we we have a school down there, and it's 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 tough down there. Right, right. But you know that establishment, that signature room, it was considered to be one of the most elegant and noteworthy things to to go to on the magnificent mile, and. Uh, they had like tons of celebrities that would go oh, there. Yeah, like, sure. like Lady Gaga had a birthday party there oh, really? years back. <laughs> yeah. Mickey Rooney went mm. there to celebrate stuff. Like there's been just tons of people. So it has a lot of history and uh, yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame to see more places go like that, you know, especially ones that have been around forever. Right. And now that they, and then, no warning, just we're done. Yeah. So I'm curious if they'll put anything else cool in its place you know like is there somebody that's willing to step in and go like well okay signature lounge is closed down but you're like that's still maybe a worthwhile spot well you never know somebody should invest in it maybe like one of these big chefs like they open up these they open up these restaurants over in vegas or in dubai and stuff Mm -hmm. like that maybe somebody will take the plunge I'll I be hope curious. So. That'd be see. cool. Yeah, I'll be curious. Do something to see. fun with it, not just open up more businesses. Yeah, some more baloney. offices. Yeah. yeah, or turn it Which into nobody's a, down there anyway to open offices anyway. So. You know what they could do? Turn it into a spirit Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I posted that picture. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Those guys are ruthless. <laughs> yeah, but one business that is planning a comeback, some good business news, is. Toys are us, man. I reported about this I years say, are ago. They, are they serious this time? Is this really going to happen? Well, here's the thing. It did make kind of a semi sort of half hearted comeback back in what was that? 2021. They opened up these little sections in stores like Macy's, like you could go into Macy's and they had what That's they call right. a toys are us. I mean, honestly, folks, it was just the toy department the of, toy a, of a, a toy section of a toy store. And they just put up a sign saying, it's Toys R Us. And that's super cool. I'm glad that there's still toy sections, period. But it ain't Toys R Us. So apparently what they're talking about now is, I guess the, the brand has been gradually building themselves back up. They're doing better. They're getting a better uh, surplus of money behind them and support. And they are planning to come up with at least 24 new brick and mortar flagship stores throughout the country. Oh, good. So Toys R Us's parent company, uh, they're called WHP Global. They announced plans to open as many as 24 or more as early as next year. Yeah, 24 and 24? 24 and 24. That sounds like a good plan to me. (laughs) Right. And does this say air, land, and sea? Okay, yeah. So check this out. Now, in addition to that, they are also, now this isn't going to be part of the 24, if I understand. Okay. There's going to be 24 like proper Toys R Us stores, right? Okay. And then in addition to that, they are going to open up shops in airports and okay. on cruise ships. Oh, okay. So, you know, like right now, if you go into, I think they have it, it may be at Midway Airport, they have um, an FAO Schwartz like store there, like a little uh, store. Then it's supposed to be FAO Schwartz. Like it says that on there and it's all toys. It's small, Mm -hmm. but it's still a cool, yeah, it's still a cool little shop, a little duty free shop to buy things before you fly. They're going to do the same thing with Toys R Us. They're going to have them. It'll probably, they'll probably be one in O'Hare. Mm-hmm. Uh, airport and then they're going to do it on cruise ships as well so maybe they'll be on disney or maybe they'll partner up with royal caribbean i've i've no idea which ones but those are going to come up like pretty soon and they said the first one is going to be at the dallas fort worth international airport Mm -hmm. uh and it's going to be open in time for christmas this year oh so that's pretty cool. I guess you need to be going to Dallas. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to one of these 24 brick and mortar ones. Because what's crazy is what people don't realize is Toys R Us is still open in other places. If you go to Canada, they still have Toys R Us. Oh, do they? Oh, yeah. And it drives me nuts. 
<laughs> it drives me absolutely freaking nuts because, like, for example, I go on the uh, uh, Pod Stallions group and everything and mm-hmm. the Toy Ventures oh. pages, all of Brian's. You're like, what can I find at Toys R Us? You're like, ah. Right. I go on all of our our, our friend, our, you know, uh, acquaintance, Brian, who does mm-hmm. Toy Ventures and Plaid Stallions and all that. Hey, Brian. Um, I go on all of his groups on Facebook because they're always really Cool. A lot of cool people on those groups. People are well behaved, thank goodness, on those groups. A lot of the people on there, including Brian, are from the north. They're from Canada. So they're always posting things like, oh, look what I found at the toy store today. And it'll be cool shit, but it's at Toys R Us, which is not here. And it's killing me. (laughs) Because, I mean, I used to, all the way up to the very, very end, I used to go to Toys R Us regularly. I didn't even buy stuff a lot of times, you know. You just went to go. Huh? I just like to go. I like to go and check things out there and stuff, you know. And and I, I still, I mean, I'm a toy collector, so I bought stuff you pretty frequently. Stuff, yeah. But uh, you know, you kept them in business. Yeah, it was just fun to go there, and it was fun at the holiday season to go there and buy gifts for other people, you know, for relatives and their kids and things like that. I really look forward to that coming back. I hope. I hope it goes through and we're not heartbroken because I first reported about this possibly happening back in like 2019. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. I've been going to be standing in line opening day. I will. I actually, I I probably would. I, if they, when they have opening day, yeah, I might do that depending on where it is and Mm -hmm. how cold it is. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But anyway, so yeah, this is going kind of long last, but not least for the what's shaking bacon segment. We have something that I'm also excited about. Okay. Not only is Toys R Us back, and I have these are tied together in my memory, too. Are they? Okay. Not only is Toys R Us coming back, McDonald's has announced that it is once again bringing back the McRib sandwich. <laughs> and I have very fond memories. One of my favorite memories of all time was one time when my dad uh, brought me home a McRib sandwich when it was brand new. And he brought me home a little bag of a couple of Star Wars figures that he picked up for me at Toys R Us because mm-hmm. he felt that he was supposed to take me out that day to go like run around. Go, he was he had promised me he was going to take me to the toy store. And I sat at my grandma's house as patiently as I could waiting for him to get home. And it was getting later oh, and no. later and later. And I'm like, this is not looking good. And I, and not I was, bode well. Yeah. And I was like eight years old, you know. So I'm prime age for you know right. Toys R Us and all that. So I was waiting and waiting. He finally picked me up. It was like oh, 10 o'clock at night and I was real glum. And he was like, well, you know, I ran and I picked you up. I uh, got you. I got us dinner and he got us and the McRib had just come out. It was pretty new. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you know, I got this McRib meal for you. And I was like, OK. And then he pulled out from behind the seat. He knew he wasn't going to make it in time to take me. So he real quick ran into a Toys R Us on the way home before it closed. And he just grabbed me a couple of Star Wars figures, which I, I needed those figures. Nice. And I was, Good oh, guess. I was so happy. <laughs> Oh, I was so happy. So I just have like fond memories of having those figures and eating that McRib sandwich because you know me and ribs. I'm, you you oh. are a rib fanatic. Yeah. And I know some people make faces, go, oh, McRib is gross. It is not gross. It's fucking awesome. Okay. I love the McRib sandwich. So I would not know. I've never had one. That's so insane to me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you'll feel about it. People seem to have a love hate with it. I mean, you know, there's nothing fancy to it. It's right. just the McDonald's barbecue sauce, which you, I'm sure you know. From right. Like, so it's that sauce, and it's on one of those riblet patty kind of things. You know, it's a boneless riblet patty. I don't know exactly what it's made up of. <laughs> <laughs> and it's on a bun, and it comes with pickles and onions and stuff. It's really good, I think. And with you dip your fries in that sauce, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I will be blowing my diet for... And when is that coming out? It said it's coming out sometime in November. Okay. And what's even better if people are like, well, oh man, if they're people are curious about it and they're like, well, when's it coming and where's it coming? Is it going to be anywhere near me? There is actually a website you can go to that is a McRib tracker. You can go to this website. It, it's got a map and it'll tell you where McRibs have been sighted and where they're available. I will be using it. (laughs) I will will be be using it. (laughs) I have to admit the first thing I did when I found out about this, when people were like, oh, McRib is back or whatever. The first thing I did is I went to that page and I typed in there. I'm like, is it in Chicago? Is it anywhere near me? It's not. The closest that somebody reportedly saw it was in like Louisiana or something like that. So is this a fan site? I, I don't know who's running it, but yeah, it's just the McRib locators website. 
Okay. So it, once it comes out and people see it, yeah, then like okay, this pe- is where yeah, it's actually people, at right people, now. People fans can like update it, like they okay. can they can report into it, and then the, whoever runs the website will update it so that it's current and that's yep. some serious dedication. Right that there. is, yeah. <laughs> that is dedication, and I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get me a McRib meal, and, and I'm gonna update it. And I'm gonna. <laughs> I might if it needs it. And I'm gonna go into my toy room at my house, and I'm gonna pull down those figures, and I'm playing with my Empire Strikes Back <laughs> figures, and I'm gonna put some cartoons on, and, and be happy. And people don't judge me. You find your happiness. I have mine. So <laughs> that's the way it goes. Anyway, and that's that. And that's that, as they say, a good fellas. <laughs> All right, let's hear from our sponsors here, the good old PFPN, Prescribed Films Podcast Network, which we are very happy to be a part of. Uh, Let's hear what they have to say. You're listening to the Prescribed Films Podcast Network, home to hundreds of hours of free podcast entertainment. The shows on this network all have a common goal providing you with the best discussions about movies and other forms of entertainment media. The PFPN hopes to fill your ear holes with audio joy. Visit our website with links to all the other amazing shows at www.thepfpn.com. Thanks for listening. All right, and with that very exciting intro there, you know that it is time for a little bit of squad talk, (laughs) as it goes. So, recently, you know, in squad talk, we have been talking a lot about what's going on in space, going on specifically with asteroids, NASA examining what's going on with some of the asteroids. They just recently did this Osiris Rex uh, mission Mm -hmm. where they went to check out asteroid Bennu. We talked about that just recently. We yes, talked about a couple it. Couple times now. Yeah, we've talked about it the whole thing because we also found out that uh, asteroid Bennu has a slight chance of hitting the Earth in the somewhat near future. <laughs> yes, so good. That is that is that is a no good. Yeah, we don't need that. So uh, we've been talking a lot about that kind of stuff, and we actually have more news this week about old Bennu. But before we get into that, I said that I had a little silly surprise for you. Oh boy. Okay. So just recently I went with my family to Arizona to celebrate my mother's 75th birthday. Happy birthday, mom. Mm -hmm. And we went around and we did some sightseeing. We went on a cool little lake cruise thing out there and checked out all the cactus and all the uh, animals, the vegetation, the big mountains and stuff mm-hmm. in the desert. It sounds amazing. Yeah, that that's kind of up that's, your alley, that's isn't it? That's my jam. That's a bucket list right there for okay. me. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, then Jess was asking if you'd want to go sometime, so maybe maybe you guys I'm there. Will. I'm there. I'm <laughs> hiding the luggage next time, guys. There you go. So, you know, I as always, we always like look for stuff, you know, maybe that would be something that we could give you, especially since you watch our kitties for us mm-hmm. while we're gone. And I came across this one silly thing, and the woman that worked there was going on and on about this, about how she had it, and she swears it's the real thing and all this stuff. So I found this genuine meteorite necklace and it's a little necklace thing that's supposedly made out of genuine meteorite they found there over in the desert in the desert really yeah that that, yeah you'll have to read all the you'll have to read all the stuff on there i probably should have taken the price tag off but that's (laughs) but yeah it's just like a little piece of meteorite and the woman was talking about it that worked there and she was like oh this is so cool and i had one of these and blah 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 and she said some kids stole it from her. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> said, well, sorry. But it's that valuable. Yeah. Well, you know, kids, they see this and they're like, meteorite, that's mine. That's cool. So they made off with it. But in any case, there you go. So I thought since we've been talking so much about meteorites and you're always so interested in space, gotcha, your own meteorite. That's pretty cool. Thank you. You are welcome. You guys are awesome. And then along with that. Oh, no, there's more. Yeah. We got some silly stickers here. <laughs> I believe that's awesome. Yeah, you're gonna have to. We have to show these off. And then there's this Arizona one that says it's out of this world because you know the whole 
alien thing. I did not see anybody doing a Naruto run. No, really. Out there. I was wondering if I was going to see anybody trying to Naruto run towards one of the uh, restricted areas, areas out there in the desert. You weren't going to try it? No. No? No, I'm too old for a Naruto run. Oh, all right, fine. People are like, what are you talking about? You have to go back and listen to our uh, Area 51 uh, podcast we did a couple yeah, years started, ago. We're talking about raiding Area 51. Yeah, people were talking about doing a Naruto run into Area 51. So I thought maybe you'd see that out there, but no, everybody in Arizona is pretty chill. So <laughs> <laughs> You were in the wrong area. <laughs> and then last but not least, is speaking of, we were talking about Star Trek and everything. Mm-hmm. It may not be your captain, but I was able to come across... You, I give you your own starship license. Ooh, that's so, dangerous. Yeah, it's an intergalactic starship license, and it's for Captain Kirk. That's pretty awesome. I don't think that's going to get you into that's any bars. That's my second captain. So yeah. I should try it. <laughs> I would love Next to see Next time somebody IDs me, I'm totally giving them this. That would be hilarious. Like, I'm totally William Shatner. Yeah. Captain Kirk. Yeah. I think that would be hilarious. You should. You should keep that just anytime. I, oh, I am. Anytime I can use it. Somebody's going to... Yeah, have your other one in hand, your real one in hand, but then just be like, hand them that. And then when they're like, the hell? And be like, oh, sorry. And then hand them the other one. (laughs) That's funny. Restrictions, Klingons. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I thought it it was just kind of silly. There you go. So I thought. Thank you. Thank you. you you I love them all. You could have your meteorite uh, little pendant thing as we talk more about meteorites. All right. I'm going to open this up while right, you talk. You open it up because the thing I want to talk about this week, because I was not aware of this when we last talked about Bennu and the whole Osiris Rex mission and all that stuff. Were Some, you Benno behind? Oh boy, you and the puns. <laughs> Don't give Megan any avenue <laughs> to open up with the puns, okay? But anyway, so I did not know that one of the people that was involved in some way with this whole mission, because usually it's all like people from NASA and right. stuff like that. But somebody that ended up getting involved was not somebody from NASA, although this person is an astrophysicist. Mm-hmm. It is another, none other than possibly, uh, it's, I, it depends on the day of the week, but most days of the week, I would say he's my favorite guitar player of all time. He's my biggest influence, my, my just hands down the best. It is Brian May, the guitar player from Queen. Nice. I am a huge Queen fan. I wouldn't say they're my favorite band, but they're they're up there. They're top five. And Brian May is, in my opinion, the best guitar player there is. And I mean, that's tough to say because I'm a big fan of a lot of other amazing guitar players, you know, David Gilmour and Neil Sean and... You know, Eddie Van Halen, so on, and Jimi Hendrix, so on and so forth. But Brian May just had it all. And on top of him being an incredible guitar player and artist in general, he's an astrophysicist for crying out loud. He's brilliant. He's a great May guy. Man can do it all. Yeah, he really can do it all. He's and by all accounts, he seems like a really genuinely wonderful human being, which is awesome. And uh, so, what, what happened was when they were doing research on asteroid Bennu, uh, the problem they were having with the asteroid wasn't so much getting the Osiris Rex to reach the asteroid the problem they were finding was landing it safely on top of the asteroid because what they want to do and we again for those that have not listened to the past episodes where we talked about this was they wanted to land a cyrus rex on Bennu and take samples of it while it's out there in space because we don't have any samples like that on earth everything we have are earth bound asteroids that have been altered once they've come through the atmosphere. So they were landing Osiris Rex on Bennu to get this completely unfettered, unaltered, you know, specimens from it. Because they believe that those specimens from Bennu could hold a lot of secrets to the early formation of our solar system. So the plan for the mission was to touch down on an area of the asteroid that they refer to as, quote, the beach part of it. It's not an actual beach. There's no palm trees. Oh, I got excited. No. I was like, what? (laughs) Not that kind of beach, Meg. So they refer to it as the beach and they wanted, they wanted to land uh, Osiris Rex on there to get to its fine grain material. But then they came to find out. Be no beach. Yeah, there were, there be no beach. Wow. (laughs) You are just on a roll. (laughs) That there was none. Bennu is actually like this soft rubble pile littered with boulders and that 
makes for a very difficult landing situation for uh, Osiris Rex. So that's where Brian May came in. Shortly before they launched the Osiris Rex back in 2016, Brian May had an encounter with Dante Loretta. Now, Dante Loretta was the leader of the Osiris Rex asteroid sample return mission. Not only is Brian a, a musician, he's an astrophysicist, but he is also very skilled and knowledgeable in the area of stereo photography. Now, do you know what stereo photography is? I do not. Okay, stereo photography is a form of, it's kind of a, a an older fashion style, although they can do it new too. It's, it's a 3D style of photography. It's been around for many years now, and he's... He's been a big champion of it, and he's brought back like a lot of renewed interest in it because of how much he's like focused on this whole stereo photography thing. They used to have it back in like Victorian times where you could have like bifocal, like binocular things, and the way it's it's kind of almost like a national treasure. Yeah, sort yeah, sort of like that. Exactly, sort of like that, or sort of like a viewmaster. Okay. You know, it's, it's, they, they work on similar types of principles, but it works on like 3D style imaging. So when trying to find a safe spot for the spacecraft to land, Brian May developed stereoscopic images of Bennu's surface for them. Mm, okay. And, uh, In this technique, it injects a depth effect to flat images, kind of like 3D glasses. And though OSIRIS-REx's cameras produced only two-dimensional shots, scientists were able to meticulously map out each inch of Bennu's surface. Wow. Which Brian May then processed through uh, clipping together pairs of side-by-side images, which allowed them to see Bennu's rugged and rough surface in 3D. Okay, and mm-hmm. and Loretta has written a book of all about this that includes all this called Bennu 3D Anatomy of an Asteroid, which I'm really interested in checking out. Oh yeah. Right. Oh yeah, that sounds. We'll be reading that. Super cool. Well, I mean, it's it's like cool, like 3D images of an actual asteroid. So there's actually pictures in there of it. Yes. Oh, cool. Yeah, of the asteroid, and it's like it's like explaining what they did to make it yes, happen. Yes, okay. and Brian May's a part of the book, so I'm like, okay, You're I'm, in. I'm sold. So then uh, May's images showed a crater that they called the Nightingale Crater. Though uh, there was a boulder known as Mount Doom, which is very Lord of the Rings of them. <laughs> uh, a, a boulder named Mount Doom was looming very dangerously at the edge of the crater uh the color of the crater suggested that it was full of ancient regolith otherwise known it basically uh like dusty blankets of mineral deposits okay and they really wanted that because that could shed a lot of light on the history of the asteroid and unlock a lot of those secrets so the scientists decided that was the place where they were going to uh, land the spacecraft and where the robotic arms should touch down and take the samples. And, and they were able to do that because, because of Brian of that. May. That's awesome. That's crazy. And I love the idea of that because again, stereoscopic imaging is actually kind of an old fashioned thing and it's such a niche kind of thing. And a lot of people might blow it off as being, you know, not that current or that interesting, but here you have an example of how they used it for just about the most modern advanced thing we've done yet yeah. is landing. The oldie bit of goodie. Yeah, landing on an asteroid and being able to take samples from it. And they wouldn't have been able to successfully have done it necessarily without Brian May's help. If it's not broke, you do fix it. Yeah. Okay. Boy, oh boy. I'm done. Yeah. Are you, are you done with all your, pun- your puns? All right. Yeah. So. <laughs> From now on, when Brian May is up there playing We Will Rock You, the rock he is singing about is an asteroid. <laughs> it's Binu. It's the Binu, yeah. Binu, Binu, rock, rock you. <laughs> wow. Okay, now I'm done. <laughs> All right. I, I think we need to just move along. But anyway, I didn't know about this. I only just heard about the Brian May thing. I get, you know, obviously he's been involved with this for years now since they started this mission, just about. I never knew he was involved. So that just made me really happy because, like I said, I'm a big, big fan of his. Big and, uh, fan. And so that's really cool to have him in you there. You Beno fan. I'm a, yeah, I, I am now a Bennu fan and a Brian May fan. So <laughs> anyway, um, moving on from that, this is the part where we like to talk about stuff that's really specific to the squad group on Facebook because mm-hmm. we get a lot of fun memes in there. Uh, a lot of our members that, 
post in there regularly and comment in there. We'll share memes as well as you and I do too. And one of the fun things we like to share in there are those choose memes for those. those We love those. Keep those coming, guys. Yes, exactly. Please keep them coming. And the choose memes, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's those ones where you'll see maybe a variety of different movies or foods or books or whatever, or records. And it'll say, you can only choose one of these, or you can only choose three of these or something like that. It always gets a lot of feedback from people in the group. People love to participate in that and debate Mm -hmm. about it and stuff. We had a whole bunch of really good ones this month. And one of the first ones that we're going to do, I'm going to do one that I put in there. We'll get this out of the way. But we do have ones from some of you other guys that put stuff in there, and we'll get to those in a minute. But this one, this was a tough one, and this is why I shared it in there. You can only choose three of these nine cereals. And for me, I like all of them. (laughs) (laughs) I like every one of these cereals. I will eat any one of these cereals. So You put it in them in front of me i'll eat them yeah right but i mean some are more favorite than others right and yeah we got a lot of really good feedback on this like i'll go through a few of them here mike reese said one five and nine for him so he picked cinnamon toast crunch uh what would be fruity Fruity pebbles Pebbles. and frosted flakes good choices yeah javier our good old javier posted that he likes fruity pebbles corn pops and frosted flakes frosted flakes is really popular it is a lot of people chose that one yeah austin said frosted flakes is the greatest cereal of all time i don't know about that i mean i love frosted flakes i do too i do but, but the I don't, greatest yeah i don't know if i'd There's say so greatest many great ones but But he also said he had to pick Lucky Charms because of marshmallows. Well, yeah. Okay, fair enough. And lastly, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Mm -hmm. Hmm. All right. So Angie, hey, Angie, how you doing? Uh, She picked seven, eight, and nine. So that would be Lucky Charms, Honey Nut Cheerios, and Frosted Flakes. Is that right? Solid, yeah. Is that what she picked? That's what she picked. Wow. Lucky Charms, Honey Nut Cheerios, and Frosted Flakes. That's interesting because that's like a really... That's a pretty diverse mix there. You know what I mean? Like those three cereals are so completely different from one another. Well, that's why you picked those. Three. No, I, I, that's why I dig it. Like, I'm like, that's a really good selection there because I'm like, man, you're really covering a lot of ground there. Cause if you pick like tricks and fruit loops and fruity pebbles, that's all, all sort fruit. of like, right. That's all sort of like one thing. Yep. Right. So yeah, I, I like those picks, Angie. That's good. Um, Adam picked Captain Crunch, Frosted Flakes, and Honey Nut Cheerios. He doesn't like his fruity cereals, huh? Interesting. Okay, Adam. That's fair enough. I mean, Cap- is Captain Crunch kind of fruity? No, Crunch Berries would be Which fruity. Crunch Berries, okay. Yeah. Uh, Heather picked four, six, and seven. So she picked Captain Crunch, Corn Pops, and Honey Nut Cheerios. No, she picked Captain Crunch, Corn Pops, and Lucky Charms. Lucky Charms. Okay, interesting. Uh, Jackson just had to be different and go backwards. (laughs) He picked a nine, five, and four. So he picked Frosted Flakes and Fruity Pebbles and Captain Crunch. Okay. Captain Crunch is getting some love here. Yeah, Captain Crunch is starting to pick it up here. Come Uh, on, my hands. Sherry picked Trix. Is she like the first one to pick Trix? I think she is, yeah. Wow, yeah. I'm surprised Trix isn't getting more love. Uh, Trix, Fruit Loops, and Honey Nut Cheerios. Okay. Okay. Tammy, our pal Tammy, she picked four, five, and eight. So she picked Captain Crunch, Fruity Pebbles, and Honey Nut Cheerios. A lot of love for Honey Nut Cheerios. I mean, yeah. No, I mean, and I, I love Honey Nut Cheerios, but it's interesting. I don't know. Like, I, I wouldn't have expected it to do as well as it's doing. Mm. My, Maybe if we were asking 10-year-old us. It would be different. It would be a little different. Yeah, I suppose that's true. And then George picked Captain Crunch, Frosted Flakes again, and Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Yeah, okay. Uh, Mom, Denise, said she'd only keep two. Oh, come on. Really? (laughs) Out of all those great cereals, there's only two there you want to (laughs) eat? Um, Pops and Frosted Flakes. Oh, it gets worse. Wow, okay. Oh, and then Dodo, (laughs) Dolores, says Cheerios and Frosted Flakes. That's it. Wow. Man, oh, man. Come on now. Yeah, they just, they're, they're old fashioned. They like the more, they like, they're like, we want the simple ones. We don't need fruity pebbles. Yeah, because your mom then adds, if it was a regular Cheerio, she would have picked that, not the honey nut ones. Oh my God. That's regular religious. Cheerios? Come, Come on. on. Jeez Louise. <laughs> you owe me a Coke. <laughs> All right, Christian said, easy, easy for Christian. He said, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Cocoa Pebbles, 
and Lucky Charms. Oh, Cocoa That's Pebbles. That's a cheat. It's not on there. Yeah. I guess it's close we'll enough. We'll let it go. Yeah, exactly. But then we got Danny who said he didn't care about the cereal. He just chose cereals based on what free toy was inside. Danny, I like the that's, way you think. That's 10-year-old answer that's, right there. That's the way you do it. Yep. Oh, man. I used to get so excited about cereal uh, toys uh-huh. or if there was like a cutout record in the cardboard on the back. Oh, yeah, read man. Read in the back of the box while you ate. Or there were games if they mm-hmm. had like mazes and stuff yep. like that. That was the best. Yep. That was the best. That was before we had phones. Yeah. You know, we just you know, like cell phones or whatever you want to call cell phones. What am I in freaking 1991 here? Cell phone. Get me my cell phone. <laughs> yeah. Smartphones, whatever. Um, and then Luke says uh, he picked Pops, Lucky Charms. And since there's no crunch berry, the third has to be Fruit Loops. Mm. Interesting. Man, that was all over, over the place. Over the good place. good yeah. job, folks, man. I love it when I see a lot of diversity because it really speaks to how different people's tastes are and stuff. But before we move on, we have to pick ours, Meg. Yes. So what would you say are your three? Um, well, clearly Fruity Pebbles. Okay, Fruity Pebbles. Yeah, I'm in my I, kitchen I at the very moment. Yeah, yeah that's true. Um, and then uh, Honey Nut Cheerios, I love. Wow. Okay. And I, I think... That. Uh, yeah. And I think I'm going to go Lucky Charms for the marshmallows. Wow. Lucky Charms. Okay. Yep. Those are my three. What about you? Blue diamonds and purple horseshoes. Yeah, I remember <laughs> that. Um, For me, this is tough, man. Ooh, this is tough. I have to go with Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Okay. Fruity Pebbles. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Uh, oh, fuck. This Come is on, hard. You got to pick. Time's running out. <sighs> I'm be like Bob Barker. I need your yep. I need your pick. Yeah, I need your answer. <laughs> Come on, Effie, give me your answer. Come on, stop looking around. Give <laughs> yeah. it to me. Come on. Don't listen to the audience. Pick your own answer. <laughs> um, okay, cinnamon toast crunch, fruity pebbles, corn pops. Corn pops. Interesting. Yeah, I was gonna go frosted flakes, but for me personally, when it comes to frosted flakes, I really like some of like the flavored mm. frosted flakes. Like I know everybody bags on it, but a couple years ago. They came out with limited edition pumpkin spice frosted flakes. Oh, were they I good? ate the shit out of those things. <laughs> oh, they were so good. Oh, if those were specifically on this list, I would have picked those. So yeah, very different lists, me and you. Yeah. Other than we both like fruity, fruity pebbles. Because yeah. I mean, they they're the best cereal ever. Exactly. Just ask Barney. <laughs> Just ask Barney and Fred. Right. Barney, my pebbles. Oh, <laughs> Fred. <laughs> All right, so we're going to move on to now. These are more unique in that they're not as big of a uh, selection. Our friend Javier shared a bunch of choose one or uh, one the other. The yeah, one or two. You got a 50 50 chance here with these. Okay. A bunch of different memes choosing between different movies. So we'll just go through them real quick. So the first one was Avengers Infinity War or Batman the Dark Knight. Okay. Now, Meg, what would you choose? Um, I'm going to have to go Infinity War. Okay. I really enjoy that one. So I will 1,000% go <laughs> Infinity War because, I'm sorry, Javier, I know, I know he's going to just, oh my God, his head's going to spin when I say this because I know he's a huge Batman fan. I love Batman. Some of my favorite superhero stuff, stories, comics, cartoons are Batman. If you take Heath Ledger... Out of the Dark Knight, that movie is garbage. <laughs> I cannot stand, cannot stand it. I cannot stand that movie. I can't stand the casting they did. I can't stand the way they wrote some of those characters in it, which sucked because the first movie, Batman Begins, I loved that movie. I thought that movie was outstanding. So I was so excited when Dark Knight was coming out. And it was another one for me where by the end of the movie, I was slouched down in my seat. And I was like, well, that's a bummer. Mm -hmm. Because the only good... But I mean, Heath Ledger is the Joker. I mean, uh, come on. That goes... That'll go down in history as one of the best performances ever, you know. And the fact that he passed on afterwards, I just highlighted it that much more. Right. I mean, I know it did. I can't take anything away from the Joker in that movie, but I have so many other problems with that movie and the the ending and it didn't end the way it should have and ah, anyway. <laughs> sorry. All right. So sorry. Yeah, so Avengers Infinity, Infinity War, War is. 100%. Okay. You know, you compare some other Batman things, you we throw some other Batman stuff out there. He, he's probably going to win with me. Yeah. But anyway, all right. So moving on, we get into some fun uh, kids, 80s kids movies here. We have 
The Sandlot, which is a classic, mm-hmm. or good old Emilio Estevez and the Mighty Ducks. <laughs> which one would you pick there? Um, I I gotta go Mighty Ducks. Really? That would that was my time, my yeah. thing. So that was a good movie. I don't remember a lot about the Sandlot. Oh my gosh! I mean, really? I, it was. I remember it being good. But I remember the Mighty Ducks better. You don't. You remember Mighty Ducks? You're killing me, Smalls. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> that's from the Sandlot, you know. <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, I would say the Sandlot. Okay. I feel like that's a classic. Now, here's the funny thing about both of these: I've only seen both of these movies one time. Oh, really? Yep. Okay. Back when they were new, I've only I've obviously cl- seen clips and things right, from it since. over the years, and like I said, and they've been quoted many many times so i'm gonna go with the sandlot you've got the mighty ducks all All right right. fair enough that one's split down the middle yeah all right now appropriately since we're in october now we have a couple of scary movies okay so you got to choose between hellraiser with good old pinhead or we have 1992's bram stoker's dracula featuring gary oldman winona Ryder, anthony hopkins keanu reeves a lot of people in that movie hmm do you have a choice? I I only have one because I've only seen one. Okay. And that was Dracula. You've never seen Hellraiser? No. Yeah, Hellraiser, it's it's really good. It's really well done. It's a very grim, violent movie. Yeah, that's why I really didn't have an interest in it. Right. Um, Hellraiser, it's not my normal kind of thing, but I have to say it, it is really well done. Um, but out of these two... It's easy for me because Bram Stoker's Dracula is a favorite of mine. Mm. I saw it twice in the theater. Did I, you? Oh, yeah. I really, <laughs> really liked that movie. I'm a huge fan. So, um, you know, Gary Oldman's one of my all-time favorite actors. Winona Ryder, easily one of my all-time favorite actresses. Keanu Reeves is one of my favorite actors. Mm-hmm. I've been a huge Keanu fan ever since I was a teenager when he did uh, River's Edge and stuff. So, yeah. That's an easy one for me. Okay. All right. So moving on from there, we have the complete opposite of that. We have (laughs) another couple of late 80s uh, kids movies, although these are interesting because these were more like dramatic animated movies. One of them was All Dogs Go to Heaven. Okay. And the other one was An American Tale. Now, have you seen either of those? I think I've seen part of one. Which one did you see? An American Tale. Yeah. I may have seen all of it. I just don't remember it. I'm really surprised you didn't see All Dogs Go to Heaven. Because... That sounded sad to me. I wasn't touching it. Oh, I feel Bambi you. scarred me. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, out of those two, I'm going to go with An American Tale. All Dogs Go to Heaven is a good movie, but it it yeah, it's too sad for me. I can't I couldn't watch that now. I just I would weep nope. like a baby. Mm-hmm. Couldn't do it. Yeah. So I'm gonna go with Five Ol and, and an American Tale. Okay. Okay. Moving on to another couple of movies. This one is very, very tough for me. And I'm not sure if you've even seen these. It's a couple of fantasy movies. Okay. One of them is George Lucas's Willow, and the other one is Legend with Tom Cruise. So have you seen either of those movies before? Like Willow Willow, right? Yeah, Willow. Like, Willow, you Willow. are great. I yeah. mean, that's, I, I adore that movie. Okay. I watched that, I couldn't tell you how many times growing up. I choose Willow. I yeah. don't think I've ever seen Legend, so. You've never seen Legend. I know. Oh my God. Okay. Wow. Yeah. No, I yeah. Too. Yeah. I mean, I love both movies. I love both movies. Willow is awesome. It's got Mad Modigan in it. Uh, it's got Val Kilmer. Come on, Val right? Kilmer. Ugh. Val Kilmer is great. He's man. so funny in it. Yeah, he was. He was hilarious in it. I have to give the slight edge really? to Legend, man. It's that good. Oh, huh? I love that movie so much. I went and saw it in the theater when it came out. Oh, I just love that movie. Tim Curry as the as the as darkness. He's supposed to be kind of like Satan or whatever in it. Mm-hmm. Is brilliant brilliant one of the most perfect portrayals ever in a movie so yeah for me it's got to go legend although willow is a super super solid second i saw eric kiki commented and was like oh my god how do you choose he's like that would be a perfect double feature (laughs) and eric you are on to something brother if one of us gets the chance we get the money and the means we are renting out a theater and we are gonna get willow and legend and we're watching it (laughs) 
That's going to be great. And then we've just got one more of those. I know there's some other, but we'll save some for later. We've got one more of those, and that was between um, some fantasy history kind of movies, and that was between Troy mm-hmm. and 300. Mm. Okay, now Megan, you may as well just go. You, you. I already know what your answer is going to be because you waxed on ecstatically about this uh, in the last episode. It's got to be three hundred. It is so three hundred. I freaking love that movie. That yeah. is phenomenal. Okay, so here's what I have to make my confession. I've never seen either of what? those movies. I've never seen three hundred. I've never seen Troy. It's just one of those things. I've never gotten around to it. All right, I'm sitting your butt down. We're watching them. Yeah, I'll have to watch them because they're I, I totally say, my I, kind of movies. Yeah, yeah, they are. You know, I love all that kind of stuff. I love like, I mean, one of my favorite books of all time was Homer's Odyssey, you mm-hmm. know, so I love Greek mythology, all that kind of stuff. I'm way into that. I'm into history. I, I love all that kind of history, Greek and Roman, all that. I just never got around to seeing these movies. That's insane. I think I've seen Troy. I don't remember it as well. Okay. And I clearly haven't seen it as much as I've seen 300. Cause right. Because I... I just think that's an amazing movie. Yeah. All right. So then moving on. All right. And this is you can only choose one favorite rock single from 1989. Now, technically, some of these songs were released earlier than that. They were released in like 87 or 88, but they hit the charts in 89. Okay. They were, you know, staples of the radio at the time. Now, these are all rock, so these there's not going to be any like Whitney Houston or, or you know, the Judds or anything like that on there. So <laughs> okay. this is all just rock. So we have Rat Way Cool Jr., Ozzy and Lita Ford, Close My Eyes Forever, The Cult Firewoman, Warrant with Heaven, Motley Crue with Dr. Feelgood, Queen with I Want It All, Metallica One, Great White Once Bitten Twice Shy, Aerosmith, Love in an Elevator, Guns N' Roses, Paradise City, Skid Row's 18 in Life, and lastly, Tesla's Love Song. Now, I'm just going to go on record right now and say this is, it, it's almost impossible for me because there's not one of these songs that I dislike. Yeah, I was going to say, this This is not easy. No, I mean, these are all really good songs. Some of them I even play in, yeah, my, in, my, in my <laughs> one of my cover bands and stuff. So this is not easy because, oh my gosh, Rat Way Cool Jr., I play that on my guitar all the time. Like, that's one of my favorite licks. Um, you know, I'm a big Lita Ford fan. Queen, I already talked about that. Metallica, Aerosmith, Guns N' Roses. This is tough. Um, well, first of all, let's read what some of you out there said. So Matt, our pal Matt, he chose, surprisingly, he chose Dr. Feelgood. Yeah, that surprises me. Because I really thought he would have picked Firewoman. Yeah. Because he loves that that song and we play it together, but eh, maybe he's burned out on it. Um, Matthew said, another Matt. Huh? Firewoman burned him. Yeah. (laughs) Boy, oh boy. Uh, Matthew Polito said Dr. Feelgood. All right. Uh, George said one by Metallica. Tammy, surprisingly, it's not the one I would have picked for her. She said Firewoman by the cult. Oh, interesting. Eric, our buddy Eric, no surprise because he's constantly bugging me to play this goddamn song. (laughs) He picked Love Song by Tesla. Uh, Chad Drummond said, he said, that's tough. Elevator, Feel Good, Once Bitten, Love Song, Paradise City. He he, he just picked half the list. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, well, I feel you. Those are all tough. And then my old buddy Dave Hansen says, damn it. Paradise City and One Are Tied. Wow. I feel that. Meg, I'm going to throw it in your court. What, what, because let me think about this a little bit. What, what would your choice be? I have it narrowed down to two. Okay. And my initial gut as you went through it was to choose Metallica One. Okay. But I think I'm going to go Skid Row 18 in Life. That's a great song. I love that song. It's a great song. I even stole the riff from it one time for a, really? November's, for a November's Doom song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's funny yeah me and me and our old guitar player eric kind of ganked something like from that but i mean it was kind of inadvertently but then once we realized what it what it was we didn't bother like, to change oh, it oopsie. <laughs> yeah we were like ah, we'll just keep it yeah <laughs> no it's a great song i'm a big skid row fan big sebastian bach fan so that's awesome um that'd be up there for me you know some of these songs the trick is i really like all these songs but there's some that i'm i'm more tired of you know because mm. i mean like when i was younger guns and roses that first guns and roses album was just 
gold to me. Like I loved the first album uh, or the first full length album, Appetite for Destruction. Paradise City was one of my favorite songs on there, but I'm so burned out on it. Mm -hmm. I've heard it so much. Uh, Love Song by Tesla. Yeah, Eric, that's a great one. But I don't I don't know. There's other Tesla songs I like a lot more than that. Once Bitten, Twice Shy is a great song, but I'm going to disqualify that only because it's not their song. It's a cover. Mm hmm. Uh, that's an old uh, Mick Ronson, Ian Hunter song from the 70s, which is great. Both versions are great. Warrant Heaven, that's a cool song, but Heaven isn't one of my favorite Warrant songs. I think they had stronger songs than that. Dr. Feelgood, man, that's a great riff. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. Man, uh, Firewoman, I love the cult. Again, that's even though I play it, that's not necessarily one of my favorite cult songs, but it's great. Close My Eyes Forever, Lita's great on it. Ozzy gets on my nerves a little bit on that song but he's i i have an issue with what we call crying ozzy when he sings like this like when, it's like stop crying ozzy i like it when you're singing like singing you know crazy train and uh over the mountain and stuff like i like tough ozzy i don't care for crying ozzy road to nowhere like oh shush come on enough <laughs> I don't want ballads from him unless it's Goodbye to Romance. If you're going to sing a ballad, Ozzy, it better have Randy Rhodes on it. But anyway, um, so for me, I, I think this is going to come down to two. Okay. It's going to come down to Metallica 1. Mm, okay. Or it's coming down to Way Cool Jr. by Rat. Wow. Man, and I know that a lot of people, like even for people that are into Rat, they're like, they don't necessarily like that era of Rat when they got a little bit, I wouldn't even say it's glammy. I mean, to me, that song's bluesy, you know, but... The guitar playing on Way Cool Jr. It's Warren Demartini. I'm I'm just such a fanboy for Warren Demartini. <laughs> and like I said, I love that riff. And the Metallica one, I mean, come on. Right. It's Metallica one. Now I'm burned out. So technically, Metallica one is my choice mm-hmm. for this. Okay. Because that out of all of these songs, that's the song that was like so influential to me. When I first heard that song, I was blown away away back on the i got that album the day it came out in september Mm -hmm. 88 when i heard that song just everything about that song it was just like oh my god i have to rewind that and play it again like (laughs) that song was mind-blowing now it's you know it's de rigueur it's like common you know Mm -hmm. but at the time that was so new but i'm pretty burned out on it you know i've heard it like a few 10 20 thousand times now (laughs) So out of the two, the one that I'm going to be more likely to want to like crank up and listen to these days is Way Cool Jr. Okay. But Metallica 1 is the better song. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think mean? that's kind of how I feel. 18 and Life comes on. I start dancing around in my living room. Yeah. You're going <laughs> to sing along with it. It's got yep. that great chorus. 18 yep. and Life, you got it. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Exactly. It gets me up and moving around. That's and, how I feel one about- one is just, it's a phenomenal song. Yeah, exactly. It's a, they're trying to compare these is just it, yeah. apples it's and bananas. Yeah, exactly. Maybe not to bananas. I yeah. don't like bananas. Sorry. All right. And then we just have one last one. I know we're going real long with this, but what the hell, what else have we got to do, right? <laughs> um, we have our buddy George shared a meme and boy, oh boy, we're going out with a, with a real Real pickle of one. <laughs> he shared a meme that was the theme of it was you can only rent three of these Stephen King movies, mm. and it essentially listed every Stephen King movie. I'll, I'll list them real quick just for the people at home. You've got Carrie, Silver Bullet, Gerald's Game, Dead Zone, Pet Cemetery, Children of the Corn, Misery, Salem's Lot, The Shining, The Tommy Knockers. The Mist, It, Cujo, Christine, Rose Red, Firestarter, Creep Show, The Stand, Doctor Sleep, 1408, Storm of the Century, Secret Window, The Green Mile, Shawshank Redemption, Stand By Me, Big Driver, I'm still going, <laughs> Needful Things, Apt Pupil, Thinner, Maximum Overdrive, <laughs> Cat's Eye, Sleepwalkers, and The Running Man. Oh my God, this is hard. I, it is really I thought hard. I had it figured out till you went through that. I was like, crap, crap. Yeah. Crap. I know, I know. Oh. I, I don't even know. Oh, I mean, can man. I choose five? Five would certainly be easier, but we'd be cheating. George would be like, no, man, <laughs> I said three. You can rent three. You ain't going to watch. You ain't going to watch. You could watch three movies in a, in a night. You know, mm-hmm. you're not going to watch five of them. You don't know me. <laughs> 
I do know. I you. won't make it through one. I was I'm just going to say, you're, you're going to make it through one third of one of those movies. <laughs> I come over to watch a movie at your guys' house. Every and time. Like, out. Every time Megan comes over to watch movies with us, like at Halloween or whatever, <laughs> and she is out like within the first 25 minutes. You get a cat to snuggle me and I'm done. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. And then we feed you and all <laughs> yep, that stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, we got to pick three. So what's your three? <sighs> Shit. Um, okay. Well, one has got to be misery. Okay. Wow. I wasn't expecting that. All no. right. So misery okay. is one of them. Um, oh, I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, I, Dr. Sleep. Okay. I really enjoyed that movie. Yep. I really enjoyed the book too. Oh, yeah. Um, um, Oh gosh! Originally, I was going to say The Shining because it needs to go with Doctor Sleep to make right, sense. Right, be a great back-to-back movie. But I really liked Rose Red. Okay, right. And I really liked Fourteen Oh Eight. Oh yeah, that's the one. I still have never seen it. Oh, I don't. Uh, okay, Misery, Doctor Sleep. I'm going Rose Red. Okay. I think that's cool. Yeah, this doesn't have to be your favorites. This just has to be that you're going to go. I think it's a nice mix. Right. You're going to go out and you're going to rent three. Mm-hmm. So you kind of want, you don't want all of the same thing. Right. So you're going to rent three. So you've got Misery and then. Dr. Sleep. Dr. Sleep. And Rose Red. And Rose Red. Okay. I think that's pretty cool. All right. So for me, my answers are probably a little bit like common. I mean, everybody knows first thing of all, you know, I'm going to pick Salem's Lot. Of course. I have to pick Salem's Lot. I never get sick of that movie. <laughs> I've been watching it since I was seven years old. So Is that the one where you slam in the door and it doesn't shut? <laughs> we did a whole spoof of it. Yep, yeah. We, we know all about uh, Salem's Lot and that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, I'm going to pick Salem's Lot. Um, I think I'm going to go with, oh man, this is tough. Fuck, this is so tough. So, okay, so I'm going to look at it like it's a Saturday night and I ain't got nobody. Um, No, it's Saturday night and I'm going to rent three movies. So I'm going to go Salem's Lot, Silver Bullet. I knew you were going to pick that one. And Dr. Sleep. Oh. Dr. Sleep is so fucking awesome. It is awesome. so amazing. Yeah. When we went and saw that, all of us. I was talking had, about it at work today, actually. Yeah. Oh, did, were <laughs> yeah, you? Yeah, I was. Yeah. When the three of us, when you, me, you and Vito went and saw that and reviewed oh. it. Again, if you want to hear more about it, so I won't waste more time, you can go watch and listen to our review that we did of it back and when Go it watch out that few, movie. It is so good. Yeah. And you know what we haven't seen? We haven't seen the extended director's cut that they came out with. What? Yep. Yeah. I haven't seen it. All right, we're renting that one uh-huh. this year. Yeah, we need to see that. So, I am shocked it did not make it in there. You know, here's the thing. Or The Shining. That's those, amazing to me. Those would have been four and five. Okay. Yeah, those would have easily been four and five. Yeah, because I I love both of those. Um, if I had to choose one TV movie or another, it would be Salem's Lot or It. Because I think of It, I still think of the Tim Curry the TV It. Show. Now, the other one, the one that came out a few years back, the first It was great. I really liked that movie. The second one was a letdown. I didn't care as much for the second one. The first one was cool. And The Shining, yeah, I was kind of on the same uh, boat as you were with that, where it's like, well, The Shining goes with Dr. Dr. Sleep. But I'm kind of burned out. I've seen The Shining a bazillion times. I've not seen Dr. Sleep a bazillion times, and I really love it. So that's the one that, like, if I was going out right now, I'm going to go rent that and I'm going to watch that. Because yeah, I really want to watch it this year. So. Yeah. All right. All right. So that was fun. That was fun. That yeah. was a great one. Yeah, that was really cool. All right. Moving along. Let's uh, let's get into the home stretch here. What do you suggest? Well, I suggest that I learn how to handle <laughs> these buttons on here better because I'm always pressing the wrong buttons. But <laughs> that's supposed it's amusing. To. Yeah, I do it uh, for your amusement. I, I, I don't. I it. don't do it for her amusement. <laughs> I just do it on accident, and she's amused anyway. So, in the "What Do You Suggest" segment, we like to suggest things to you gently, gently suggest nudge, just a nudge a in the kick. direction. Yeah, in the direction. Yeah, with Meg, it's a probably a punch and a bite and a kick out the window, and like go get it, <laughs> right. Maybe. Yeah, maybe a little bit. <laughs> but we like to suggest things that we've been into lately that we think is worth recommending to y'all. Um, I got to be honest with you. I haven't been into a whole lot of stuff lately. I I haven't really... 
You've been busy. I've been really busy and life has just been a bastard lately and I won't get into personal stuff. Kicking but a teeth. Yeah, it's been a kick up the dupa, you know. And uh, so I haven't had a lot of time to get into checking out new things. So this might seem like a cop out, but I can legitimately recommend this and I won't wax on too long about it because we've got reviews of it. I suggest if you have not gone and checked out Star Wars Ahsoka, mm. Make sure you go check that out Mm -hmm. because I know a lot of people personally that are like, eh, I don't know if I'm that interested in it because I didn't watch Rebels and Clone Wars and I've been sort of burned out. I didn't like the last couple Star Wars movies and all that kind of stuff. Forget that. Trust me. Go out, do a little bit, just a little bit of research. Go watch a screen crush, you know, mm-hmm. video. Get like everything a, you need to know. Like get one of those videos that's like everything you need to know before watching Ahsoka. It'll be like 20 minutes long or something like that. If you even need that much, even if you don't, I still think you can watch Ahsoka and enjoy it for what it is. Because yeah, you can pick up on who everybody is and their importance. Right, exactly. And it really To me, Ahsoka feels like the most truly Star Wars thing that they have put out for Star Wars, at least since The Mandalorian. And I'm going to go as far as to say as since Rogue One came out. Like that felt like the most Star Warsy thing they had done in a while. Like I like the I I like the Mandalorian. I liked Obi Wan Kenobi. I liked Book of Boba Fett. I you know, Andor is really cool. Like they're all really cool. But to me, Ahsoka was, I felt a little bit like a kid again watching it. Like it made me excited again. And I haven't felt that excited about Star Wars at least since the end of season two of Mandalorian when Luke Skywalker came back, you Mm -hmm. know, and that was brief. I like Ahsoka better than the Mandalorian. Wow. Yep. And I love the Mandalorian. Don't get me wrong. But there's stuff on the Mandalorian that I'm like. Eh, you know, there's there's episodes that are kind of forgettable and certain things that they've done that I was like, eh, that's not the way I would have done that. Or, you know, just little nitpicky things. And some things are better than other. Ahsoka was great from beginning to end. It really was. And if you want to hear more about it, you can go back and watch and listen to our reviews that we just got done doing, actually. So feel free to go listen to our stuff. But yeah, for those of you that if you're on the fence and you're like, you know, I like Star Wars, but I've been burned out or I've been sort of unsure, I'm recommending it. Go give Ahsoka a chance because, boy, I think it's really good. This is what should have come out before they did The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi and all that. I wish this could have came out first. If this had been the thing that brought Star Wars back, Mm -hmm. this and The Mandalorian, it would be a different story. You, you know, think? yeah, okay. I th- I think I think it wouldn't be as criticized and, you know, so much negativity as we've been seeing towards the franchise in general. Yeah, because now Dave Filoni is like trying to go back and right wrongs, you know, yes. he's trying <laughs> to true. he's trying to fix things that they screwed up with The Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker and some of the other things they did. Yeah, this this is great. Yeah, and the like fact in the right hands now. Right. And the fact that it's taking the great stuff from Clone Wars and Rebels and making it canon and making it, you know, and the heir to the Empire stuff, all the extended mm-hmm. universe stuff like they're Filoni's making it. He's remolding the Star Wars story into something that I think most of us can agree feels like Star Wars again. And it's great. So that's my suggestion. That's a solid suggestion. I agree. Okay, cool. Now, Megan, what do you suggest? I have sticking with the stars. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm always Mr. Star Wars and you're Star, Star Trek. Trek. Yep. So I have just finished Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Oh, you finished it. I did. Oh, wow. Yeah, two seasons. I, I binged it. Nice. I really got into it. So I sometimes have a hard time getting into these new shows to the characters. And right. I guess maybe it helped. I knew who Pike was. I knew right. who Christine was. Right. It's a different doctor. Everybody right. else, you know, Ethan Peck is Spock. Right. So at least I knew some of them. But I really liked everybody. Especially Christine. She's awesome. I loved it because it has the action. There's visiting all the new worlds. Right. Strange new worlds. So it felt like, you know, original Star Trek to me. Right. And it had the humor. In there as well. Okay. 
Okay. So I really enjoyed it. Now, I would not suggest one episode. <laughs> I know what episode you're talking about. <laughs> Don't start with, whatever you do, do not start with the musical episode. Do not start with them. Thank goodness it's the second to last episode. Yeah. Now, at least it wasn't, they just randomly, they're just singing just for the heck of seeing it. It's like built into the episode. They're like, why am I singing? And <laughs> like, what is even happening right now? And, um, but I, I found it and I like musicals. Right. Right. But every song sounded the same. Didn't matter who was singing it. They were all very powerful singers. I don't know if it was actually the actors singing it or if they were just mouthing it or something yeah. yeah overdub but every song sounded the same as like you you know you can have some soft ones and even, even like the soft like who am i what am i doing who am i becoming became this like a huge production and i was like why why can't it just be a nice a little ballad right and you're alone in your room why do you need to be singing at the top of your lungs making this big thing about it yeah that's very broadway musical that's the problem i have with broadway musicals is because so much of it it's so it's so brash and singing it's like oh my god relax relax i I had the same thing with that the new pink ladies oh the grease soft shoot thing yes it's like every song sounded exactly the same Mm. and that's not how grease was no not at all so i i mean i i don't even think i finished it honestly i was like i'm not going back I watched up to where they had, and then I, I was done with it. But other than that episode, I really enjoy it, and I can't wait for next season. Okay. I haven't watched any of it yet. Well, you better get to it. Yeah, I do. Tap, I tap. do need to get to it, especially since Pike is my favorite captain. He is, and he's in Star Trek Discovery. I know. Now that I have seen some of. Yeah, I'm in season two. Yeah. Yeah, so. season two is the good season. Of, yeah, and that's of where he's, he comes into it. So right, and I have seen some of that and everything, and uh, as same same with uh, season one and two of Discovery. I I kind of I I watched it, and then I kind of binged through a bunch of uh, videos of the other creators made where they sort of like cut it up and made it all like you know took all the episodes and made like a two and a half hour more <laughs> digestible version, version of, it of it and stuff where they cut out things because some of okay. it I just was having a hard especially with season one I was having a hard time getting through it yeah I was having a hard time too because it was so serious it's like where is the little bit of comedy to it right but it did get better towards the end yes I was able to get into it easier so cool but Star Trek Strange New Worlds highly recommend Minus that one episode. <laughs> All right, cool. And then lastly, we always love to throw out, uh, you know, some love towards other content creators, other channels and stuff like that on social media, on YouTube, wherever. Megan, I think you have the one this uh, this time around, right? I do. Um, I've been coming across this channel um, it just kind of randomly shows up, you know, on, you scroll through Facebook and it has yeah. all these little videos of TikTok and everything. Um, but it's a couple, they're a married couple, and they are a couple that tries viral challenges and crazy food hacks. And that's all they do. And they blow it spectacularly often. It, and it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it doesn't go well. They end up farting on each other. Or, <laughs> I've or, seen some of these yeah. videos. And this one where she, I trust my wife challenge where she's trying to knock a cup off of his head with a belt. Oh, God. So, yeah, it's stuff like that. They take the ball to their body and have to like bounce off of it in circles. And yeah, it's, it's, they crack me up. Yeah. So, what are they called? They're Team Balmort. Balmert. Balmert. Yeah. B A L M E R T. Team Balmert. Mm hmm. Um, and, and they just crack me up because, like you said, nothing ever goes right. <laughs> <laughs> Always something goes wrong in this. And it, I just can't help it bust up laughing yeah they're every really, time i watch they're it really so. funny yeah you can find them they're on youtube and they're on tiktok Talk. and they're on instagram and they're on they've got a Snapchat. facebook yeah and they're on facebook facebook's like the easiest way to find them if you just look up team balmer and they've got a bunch of their videos in there and yeah they usually just don't they don't end well <laughs> But they're funny. <laughs> that would be like me and you trying this stuff. Oh, it yeah. Would not that's end well. why it's not. We're not. We're not trying. <laughs> oh, I keep trying these. to get them to do it, guys. But they. No, the no, I'm not, not trying. I don't trust it. anybody <laughs> with any of this <laughs> stuff. But yeah, they're a couple based out of Ohio. And so they're just a, you know, middle aged Midwest couple that are just doing some goofy Being stuff. Being silly. It's pretty funny. 
yeah, it's it's good. So if you're looking for something lighthearted and everything, some you can easily watch when you're on your lunch break at work or whatever. Mm-hmm. You watch you're having something. a bad day, you need just something to laugh at. Yeah, yeah, they're good for that. Yes. So awesome. All right. Well, that's it for us. Uh, we thank you so much for listening to us ramble on about all this <laughs> stuff. We highly, highly encourage you not only to like this if you enjoyed it, please share it with your friends. Please, if you're not already doing so, please subscribe to us. And please, especially the main thing is we love feedback. We want to hear feedback from you, uh, especially if you go. So many of you have done a great job with feedback, commenting like we talked about earlier on on these choose memes and people that have shared us some of these choose memes. Some of you that go and add in these news articles and are like, Hey, did you guys hear about this? We thrive on that. And that's basically what this show, um, you know, exists on and everything. So please keep that up. We will be back. We do this every two weeks Mm -hmm. and we will be back two weeks from now with another episode. So that being said, It's time to say goodbye. I'm gonna sing us out like it's strange new worlds. Oh my god. (laughs) You're like, why is this happening? Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. We'll spare everybody. (laughs) We'll see you all very soon, everybody. Take it easy. Bye bye.